And let me just uh, explain that um, this integrative approach uh, that I'm advocating, uh, I adapted it from a research, uh, a research approach. So I'm trying to bring it into the teaching and learning. It is an approach or it is a framework that is used in research. So I was saying to myself, is it possible to bring this integrative approach into the teaching and learning from the research? I'm trying to... Uh, uh, this is uh, just a draft uh, presentation outline. And the purpose of this paper is to explore ways of integrating indigenous, which is, I want to call it ind indigenous local local stroke and Western knowledge and pedagogical strategies used in the primary education schools with the intent of making education responsive to the education context of Botswana. That's my, uh, my the papers of this paper. And let me just give you a little background. Yesterday when I came back from another meeting, I found that there was a professor who was presenting on IQ, intelligence test, Kaufman, and I just happened to listen part of the presentation. Then I was asking myself as he was presenting the last part, I think, because I found him already presenting. I was saying to myself, intelligence tests that are being used to is it possible that uh, are used in the Western country uh, and they measure the same thing to the children who are living in Africa or in the context of Botswana. And I was asking myself this question because there is a time when I was trying to review questions because I like looking at the content uh, of exams, even the content, content, content that is being taught. And I was reviewing one of the uh, uh, these international tests that are being used to check maybe science, intelligence of science students or what, what. And one of the questions uh, where they were asking about cyberbullying, then I said to myself, what if this question was asked to Botswana children, because the test after all was being asked to Botswana children, mm -hmm. who are living in remote areas and they've never even seen a computer, what answers are they going to give? Maybe that's the background why I'm trying to say, why not integrate the indigenous or local with the Western knowledge? Then I also ask myself the same question to say, if this IQ test, if I were to construct an IQ test as a Mutswana, and then I would ask Western uh, peoples or learners to write a composition about life, uh, life at the Kekli pools, would they really perform as those kids who are in Africa or in Botswana uh, to say, to speak. So that's why, that's, that, that's a little bit of the background why I'm trying to say, is it possible to integrate indigenous local uh, knowledge with the uh, West and pedagogical strategies with the Western one? The reason why I'm saying integrating is because um, as you looked at, as you saw my topic, no man is an island. We don't want to say, uh, we want to throw away all what we had learned from our colonizers. Uh, because you will notice from my script, well, for, for continue to cling into these Western teaching strategies, even though sometimes this, uh, teaching strategies are not suitable for our local community, but we continue to cling unto them. So I am saying, I'm not saying we have to throw away the, the Western ways, but I'm saying, why can't we integrate them with our own local uh, teaching and learning strategies? And as I was reviewing this, I looked at the, our own educational policies. I looked at the educational policy of 1977, which was also advocating in that we need to make education relevant and we have to uh, include uh, things like cultural norms and values into our own education system as we are teaching our learners. I also looked at uh, the, 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 because there are two major 
policies in Botswana, the policy on education of 1994, which was also emphasizing uh, the importance of education system to address or to develop moral and social values and cultural identity. That's the major uh, reason why I'm trying to say, now let's integrate what we already have with our own local knowledge. And in my paper that I've already dra drafted, I started by looking at things like decolonization and indigenization. I'm saying we do understand that we have been colonized. So these uh, Eurocentric ideas, we have them in our mind. And there's no way we can just leave them like that. But we have to start critiquing the, 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 this dominancy of the Euro-Western thoughts so that we can be able to indigenize, to acknowledge and value and respect our indigenous worldviews, the knowledge and perspectives. Just, in other words, we have to value our own worldviews just as important as other worldviews. That's where I am coming from. And I am saying while we are doing this, we have to uh, revitalize, gain, the, try to gain the lost identity. That Those words at the top, because I was in a hurry, is revitalization, retribution, um, protect and restoration, protection and restoration. I'm saying, uh, as we are trying to bring in these local indigenous strategies of teaching and learning, we are helping our our children, our own children, to gain the lost uh, identity. We are trying to bring back the justice. We are trying to protect and uh, restore our lost knowledges, pedagogies, and our value system. So the paper has this as a way of trying to say, uh, of trying to integrate. I have that picture or that diagram uh, to say as we are as we try to integrate, we have to look at the African philosophical assumptions. What is it that we as Botswana believe to be the, our, is our knowledge, is our reality, our, our values. And then we have to try to decolonize and then indigenize. And you will see in, in the middle of that, this is a, an, an, a, a symbol that Botswana usually like. We are protecting who we are. We are restoring our dignity. We are revitalization and retribution. I adapted this from the, the, the evaluation, but I've removed some of the frameworks because I just wanted the integrative uh, approach framework. How am I saying we should uh, try to, to integrate? I'm saying we already have the Western ways of learn, teaching and learning, but now we can introduce other things that will bring, uh, will help our, our our learners to, to understand our own teaching and learning strategies that were used, our indigenous ways, like using of talking, talking circles. We know uh, most of our Botswana children, they know or they understand these talking circles. What if we teach the group activities using the talking circle? Because the talking circle uh, helps us to understand that we are one and we are all equal. It is a traditional way uh, that has been used by our forefathers. And we are saying we can still use this in our teaching and learning environment as a strategy to make our learners uh, gain respect. And I am saying when we are using the talking circle, we are even introducing that idea or that philosophy of Ubuntu, the, the philosophy that say we should respect one another. The, you, 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 you are interdependent on one another. You listen to one another. You respect their um, ideas. You don't criticize, but you can critique. You learn to uh, appreciate other people's views. And you are all equal when we are seated in that talking circle. No one is better than the other. And we am deriving this from one of the Setswana proverbs that say, Mualibi ubu alaka, or simple translated that anyone has the right to say his or her own mind in a talking circle. And we know that in our Botswana culture, we, we have these uh, quota systems, which are almost like semi semicircles. So where each and every member of the community is being valued. 
So I am bringing that idea into the context of the school. I'm saying also we should use storytelling in order to develop people to be able to write compositions, to be able to understand this literature that they are being given to read. Let's start by allowing our students to appreciate the stories that they know or they've heard or they've learned from their grandparents. Maybe when you are using the talking circles, allow students to tell the stories. Or you as the teacher, you can tell the stories which children can relate to. Because I was reading a comprehension from my, uh, one of the comprehension exercises that my, 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 my son brought from, from school. Yes, I do understand he goes to uh, these private schools. And I was saying, why is it that these comprehensive questions they are talking about coyote and what, what? Why can't they talk about the, the rats and the mouse and the hare which are there in our country? So if they tell the stories, they learn to develop, to write their own stories. To, so that when they grow up, they're able even to write their own books from their own stories. Now when they are reading the literature that is out there, the literature that has been written by other people, mm -hmm. they can understand and be able to, to apply what they, 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 they are understanding from the, from the literature. I'm saying in order to test them or to make them critical thinkers, mm -hmm. we can use proverbs. Proverbs are very rich in training be, to be critical thinking to be critical thinkers because proverbs don't really give you the, 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 the exact translation of what it means. It means something different. So you want your children to, 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 to understand that uh, when they are learning these proverbs, they are developing their mind. They are being taught to be critical thinkers, to go beyond, to look beyond what is being said. And in conclusion, because I didn't really write much, I am saying uh, I want us to explore this integrative approach to teaching and learning in our classrooms so that we can uh, develop Botswana children